This is George from High Tech Legion. As you can probably guess, just taking a look at what's sitting here, it's a really interesting time in cooling. Typically, we only see a really viable contender for a top spot in cooling come along once every couple of years. The NHD 14 held it for years, then barely got nudged out by the Fantex uh, 14 PE, and I mean just barely nudged out. And since then, we really haven't seen anything you know that came close. But right now, uh, we're sitting here looking at three coolers that really conceivably could take over a top spot. Uh, we're looking at the CryoRig R1, the Noctua NHD 15, which is the follow-up to the NHD 14, and we're also looking at a 240 millimeter uh, closed-loop liquid cooler, the Zalman Reservator 3 Max, which is looking to be the best 240 millimeter uh, closed-loop cooler on the market. So definitely very, very interesting time. CryoRig, newcomer to the market. Zalman and Noctua, who have been in cooling for a long time, have a lot of experience, and also have brought a lot to the table in the past. So now we're going to dig in, and we're going to throw these guys up against the 14PE, the Noctua NHD 14, and uh, the Zalman's going to go up against its uh, brethren in the 240 millimeter category, and of course we're going to see crossover with the 240 millimeters and the air as well. So Good time to be looking at it, and we're going to have a serious throwdown between some really big coolers here. You know, there are certain phrases that are just impossible to take lightly, and successor to the NHD 14 would definitely have to be one of them. Uh, but now, Notch was coming out with the NHD 15, which is actually taking over from the NHD 14 uh, as their flagship cooler, but it's based on the NHD 14 design. You know, we saw the NHD 14 at the top for so long, and now uh, Notch was finally making a move to improve it, not only in terms of cooling performance, but also in terms of compatibility. Now, first taking a look at the box, as you see here, you see right there, based on the award-winning NHD 14 right on the box, the box itself, obviously beautiful. Everything Noctua does, um, from the packaging to the smallest screw, is always done absolutely top of the line. And there's no exception here with the NHD 15. I mean, the packaging is absolutely beautiful. And of course, the unit itself is gorgeous. Um, so taking a look at the features here, six heat pipe, uh, dual tower design, widened uh, stack and expanded heat pipe layout, high RAM compatibility in single fan mode, dual NFA 15, 140 millimeter fans, PWM support and low noise adapter included, excellent component cooling, SecuFirm 2 mounting kit, which we've seen, you know, with the last couple of iterations of Noctua, and it's really just an incredible mounting system. Compatibility with past and future sockets. Of course, you know, those past and future sockets being uh, Intel LGA 775, 1150, 55, 56, uh, 1366 in 2011, and the AMD FM1, FM2, as well as AM2, AM3. And of course, get quick explanation in about a dozen languages on one side, and moving around the back, a little further explanation of those same features we just talked about. And finally, moving over to the side, we actually see some of the uh, specifications. Now, uh, a couple of important things. First off, the dimensions, 165 millimeters tall. That's obviously a consideration. Make sure it's going to fit in your case. If you have to, buy another case so it will fit. I mean, it's an HD 15. It's going to be worth it more than likely. So weight, 1,320 grams. Not the heaviest cooler we've seen, but really, it's close. So something else to keep in mind right there. The two NFA 15 fans, fans I should say. Uh, 1500 RPM max at 24.6 dB with the low noise adapter, 1200 RPM, only 19.2 dB. So you do get a lot of air movement here with uh, some very, very low noise. Now let's take a look at the NHD 15 itself. Like we say, based on the NHD 14 and looks very similar kind of from the get-go, except for the fact that you've got the 140 millimeter fan up front. But at first glance, you don't see a lot of difference. Now, what's going on here, and I'm going to take off front fan just so we can get a look a bit closer. They have actually widened up the fin array and the stack itself from 140 to 150 millimeters wide. That allows you to space out the heat pipes a little bit more, so you get more even heat dispersion, plus you get more surface area. It's more, disper uh, more even dispersion, more uh, surface area, obviously better cooling. It's very, very simple. The other thing they've done, 
they've notched out the towers themselves. And when it overhangs your RAM slot, you've got taller RAM, it can slide right under here. But of course, with the fan in the front, that's gonna be a problem. I mean, obviously, the fan's gonna drop down as well. But if you're using a single fan or you wanna go put the fan on the back, you can do that as well. So you actually can use it with tall RAM now. So there's no excuse, you know, as far as, well, there's RAM problems up. There's not anymore. You've got the notch out here, so you can actually use it with taller RAM. Now, as we said, you've got six, six millimeter heat pipes, and they are in a straight line across. Once again, spread out further, better heat dispersion, beautiful polished nickel over copper on the uh, contact plate. Clips on the fans, as I say, and Noctuas being Noctuas, as you can see, they are fingerprint magnets. You do need to be careful about that. But, you know, of course, nothing that uh, won't wipe off. But really, just a beautiful cooler and exactly what you'd expect the NHD14 successor to look like. Um, and now two 140 millimeter fans. The other thing I want to point out real quickly, they say uh, that it does have some component cooling. And you actually do, because when you've got these fans down here, as you can see, they drop down below. They're actually blowing air through. So you're going to get... Um, some air blowing onto the components on your motherboard, uh, especially in the power delivery system in your motherboard, across those uh, heat sinks as well. So you are going to get a little bit of improved performance there. So we're seeing, you know, a setup for better cooling capability as well as better compatibility and really great looking design from Noctua once again. Getting a look at the Secufirm 2 mounting kit and the included accessories. If you haven't seen the Secufirm 2, it's really a fabulous kit to use. I'm going to start. They actually package the Intel kit and AMD add-on separately, so it makes things a little bit easier. I uh, get full instruction manuals for the different types of Intel mounting. As you can see, very well laid out, easy to follow. And it's actually a very, very easy install to begin with. Moving on, obviously, you've got your retaining brackets. Backplate. As well as your bolt downs. Moving over on the AMD side. AMD kit, much, much simpler. You see, actually uses the AMD backplate. So you've just got the two retaining brackets with screws. Hold it down as well as the instruction manual. And finally, the accessory kit. You've got a Y connector and two low noise adapters. The low noise adapters actually have to be used separately on each fan. You can't plug into the Y cable and then into a low noise adapter and then into your motherboard. It doesn't work. You need to go each fan with a low noise adapter into the Y uh, adapter. Hold downs for the fans, fan screws, small tube, thermal interface material, only tool you need to install is included. And finally, the metal Noctua badge. So, great looking accessory kit from Noctua is always, uh, like I said, Secufirm 2 mounting kit, really is second to none uh, in terms of usability and functionality. It's also probably the best built mounting kit out there right now. The NHD15 uses the Secufirm 2 mounting kit. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at how it goes in. If you've, uh, you're upgrading from NHD14, uh, which you had the original Secufirm mounting kit. Uh, this is actually quite a bit different, quite a bit easier. First off, backplate already comes with the bolts fixed. And as you can see, it does have the cutouts for the three screws on your Intel backplate, as you see. So just make sure you line them up and put the backplate into place. As you can see with the backplate in place, we've got the four bolts coming through. Next, we've got four spacers, black plastic, Go right over the bolts. Mounting clips go into place. Very important you follow the instructions uh, for your socket. As you see, there are little differences. 
We're doing 11.55, so we'll be using the center holes on each corner. As you can see, they bow out away from the CPU. Next, four small nuts go right into place. This is just about a tool for your install, as you can see. Um, you want to get the nuts down, hand tighten them. As you can see, the way the bolts uh, on the mounting, uh, the back plate are, they actually do have a stop point, and you will feel it. You know, very simply, it just stops turning suddenly. It's not, you know, like it gets tighter and tighter, it just stops turning. And you want to take it to that point, um, which you usually can do by hand without a problem. All four in, if you want. Grab your handy dandy knock to a screwdriver right out of the install kit, and you can do the final tightening. Like I say, don't over tighten, just so you feel the stop point. And mounting bracket is completely in place. Uh, really a painless procedure, as you can see. So we're gonna get the tower ready, and uh, we're gonna drop it right in. And I've gone ahead and applied the thermal interface material. As you can see, we've got a spread. I've already actually put, uh, put it down once, just to make sure we're gonna get a nice even coating. Object, as you can see, the two bolts are sticking up. We've got the two screw down nuts on the cold tower itself. So we'll just get in there with the long screwdriver that is included, get it set over, get a start on the first one, and just need to thread it a little bit so you can come down and get the second one started. And once you get that started threading, move back up to the top and go back and forth, tighten a little bit at a time until you reach the stop point. Uh, you don't want to try and tighten past the stop point. You will actually feel a stop. And tower's in place. Really, really simple to install at the uh, Secu Firm too. As you see, very, very solid. Now, uh, something you might want to notice uh, really quickly, it does come down past the first PCI slot into uh, almost to the second or PCI slot, which is typically most people's uh, first PCI Express X X16 slot, but you do have room obviously there to uh, go between the cooler and the GPU. So now we just need to get the fans in place. Something I do want to point out before we mount the front fan, if you take a look, um, using standard height ADA, uh, ADAT of RAM here, but you can see there's just a ton of room between the RAM and the cooler itself. So if you're going to mount the fan on the back, you can put any RAM you want up here. Um, I'm pretty sure even Dominator Platinum will fit up here without a problem. I mean, you've just really got a tremendous amount of room there. And finally, you're going to want to put your second fan into place. Obviously, preferred up front. If you are using the tall ram, you can go in the back. Just make sure you switch your fan clips around and make sure your fans are both blowing in the same direction. You don't want to just turn it around and then wind up with uh, all your air blowing into each other into one um, heat sink. You're not going to get any cooling that way. So obviously just clip it into place. One of the things about the uh, Noctua clips, if you go with the bottom first, they're just about self-clipping. And your fan's into place. Finally, if you have two uh, fan headers, you can wire them individually, or you can use the included Y adapter. So, really simple install. The uh, Secufirm 2 is just a fabulous mounting kit. You know, as I said, very, very easy to install. Very solid install, as you see. Just really quality top to bottom. So, got it in. Let's see how it performs. Now, of course, the question on everybody's mind is, what's the performance like on the NHD 15? So, put it up against the best of the best of what we have. Um, the NHD 15, as you see here, uh, stock with fans maxed out, 
Obviously, you know, a stock 4770K is really no match for, you know, any of the coolers in this test. But uh, the interesting thing to look at here, the DB, only 33 DB, easily the quietest, quietest of the coolers in this test. And performance with the stock, obviously right on par. Now, when we change over and we keep everything uh, below 40 DB, obviously it doesn't affect the NHD 15, but you do see that it picks up even more of a lead over the CLCs, which are affected by that. Now, obviously, you're not going to be using an NHD 15 on a stock cooler, or I should say on a stock chip. So now we've bumped it up to 4.4 gigahertz, 1.206 volts. And we see that the NHD 15, again, right in the top tier there, uh, fantastic performance, still 33 dB. It's absolutely phenomenal, topping out at um, 69 degrees. It is a couple of degrees uh, warmer than the R1 Ultimate, uh, right on par with the TC14PE. Of course, the uh, big question on everyone's mind, how does it compare to the NHD14? Well, the uh, D14, we've tested against the PE many, many times. Uh, and it's typically two to three degrees higher under load. So you're looking at about a three to four, uh, I should say two to three degree drop uh, using the NHD 15. And again, you get more um, compatibility with the D15 than you did with the D14. Now, moving over again, uh, dropping uh, everything so that all the coolers remain under 40 dB. So it's livable noise in the room. Doesn't affect the D15 at all. Performance stays the same, but you see a huge gap here between the D15 and um, the best of the best as far as 240 millimeter uh, CLCs goes. I mean, once you try and keep that, the noise down on them, as you can see, temperatures again skyrocket. The D15 is a clear cut winner as far as uh, performance to noise. I mean, it's the performance to noise on it's absolutely phenomenal. So the tests were pretty much what we were expecting. Um, the D15 is just really a stellar performer. Obviously, as a replacement for the NHD 14, the NHD 15 has some really big shoes to fill, uh, and it's going to be a landmark piece if it works as well. Now, the question is, I mean, did they improve on the NHD 14, or is it a regurgitation? Well, obviously, we saw in the benchmarks, uh, there is a performance improvement. Uh, we saw a couple dBs better, and it's actually a little bit quieter than the NHD 14. So, I mean, you're getting better performance, less noise. Now, one of the big things here also uh, is RAM compatibility. The um, NHD 15 actually can fit with tall RAM. I mean, even Dominator, you know, um, the uh, Kingston Predator, the tallest RAM is going to fit with it. You do have to move the fan to the back and you drop a couple of degrees as far as um, outright cooling performance. But even with it on the back, you're still running at, you know, temperatures that are better than just about any other air cooler out there and are better than the best of the 240 millimeter CLCs that everyone, you know, claims they have to go to in order to fit their RAM in. Um, so really, it makes no sense. And it's at a lower price point, I might add. So what are you getting here? I mean, you're getting a, an absolutely fabulously made unit that, you know, top to bottom just really is put together as well as any unit, uh, cooler, non-cooler, whatever that you're going to see. Um, fabulous mounting kit, great performance to noise. I mean, great overall performance, uh, and it's very quiet. So, I mean, obviously the NHD 15 is going to get the High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award. But, you know, as an overall package, as a successor to the NHD 14, it's absolutely worthy. No question about that. It ups performance. It lowers noise, ups compatibility. I mean, what more could you ask for? And, I mean, it's absolutely pristine, like I say, in build and design. Uh, of course, the aesthetics of Noctua, you know, it's either you love it or you don't. There's no in between. And... You know, just something, you know, you have to, you know, ask yourself. So uh, the NHD 15, once again, High Tech Legion, Editor's Choice Award. And I'm sure it's going to be another landmark piece from Noctua that we're going to be seeing around for a long time at the top of the cooling charts.